Ladies and gentlemen, I am John Pace, a member of the R.M. Santilli Foundation and the chairman of the World Lecture Series on Hadronic Mathematics, Mechanics, and Chemistry. It is a pleasure and honor for me to present Professor Ruggiero Maria Santilli, who will deliver part two of Lecture 2C on the novel Gaino Mathematics Needed for the Invariant Treatment of Lee Admissible Formulations. In particular, Professor Santilli reviews the laborious series of trials and errors during the construction of the new Gaino Mathematics as part of research that he conducted at Harvard University, the Institute for Basic Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, Russia, the International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, Italy, the Institute for Basic Research at the Castle Prince Pignatelli Molise, Italy, and other leading research centers. I should indicate, again, that this Lecture 2C is only the first of a series of lectures on the invariant Lie admissible formulations of irreversible processes that include additional lectures on the physical, chemical, experimental, and industrial profiles. I have no words to express the implications of this new mathematics achieving the invariant formulation of irreversible processes. In fact, Gaino mathematics permits basic advances in all quantitative sciences, with particular reference to the prediction, treatment, and industrial development of new energies and fuels. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Professor Santilli, again as a true scientific leader who has dedicated his life to seek basically new scientific knowledge in all quantitative fields, a leadership that is now followed by scientists the world over. Ladies and gentlemen, today we shall present the birth, a brief history, and an outline of the new mathematics that is known under the name of Geno Mathematics, which is apparently necessary for the invariant treatment of the most important branch of Adroni mechanics known as um, Lie Admissible Formulation. The name uh, Geno Mathematics was recommended to me by my wife, uh, Carla, because she had spent um, seven, seven years uh, studying um, in high school in Italy, the ancient Greek, and, uh, and the proposal was, to use the, was in the sense of Geno's topos, namely inducing a new topology. Uh, my wife also recommended the name um, Isomathematic from Isos Topos, which means preserving topology. So the, the very, very name, Genos, is intended to alert you that indeed now we are passing um, Lie axioms and other um, conventional axioms of 20th century sciences for new vista, for new advances that are necessary, as I hope to indicate, for an axiomatic and invariant treatment of irreversibility. The best um, presentation of uh, Geno Mathematics is in my, that I know at least as far as details concerned in my, in my two, two volumes of, um, of um, elements of Adronic Mechanics, that's 1,000 pages. The, the, um, uh, needless to say, I cannot uh, review in 15 minutes or so <coughs> this body of work. So the objective of this um, lecture is essentially th that of bringing to your attention some of the stumbling blocks that have um, emerged in the construction, in the achievement of the invariant formulation of irreversibility, as well as tell you a little bit of history, because, the, because the, in this way, there are possibility that some of you may see alternatives that are very much encouraging and solicited. Also, the history will indicate um, some of the main, uh, main open mathematical problems. There are several, needless to say. Isomathematics is dramatically more advanced than genomathematics. Very well, to begin the lecture, um, let's briefly outline the, the main result of the uh, part one of this uh, part two. Um, essentially, what we did, we presented the, the, what we call the fundamental dynamical equations of Adronic mechanics, which are, of course, of Lie admissible character, and uh, consist of the following Lie admissible covering of Heisenberg equation of quantum mechanics, of course, in the infinitesimal form, and this is its corresponding finite form. When the time here is infinitesimal, you recover this Lie admissible equation. The, the, the main, uh, those equations were proposed um, in two memoirs I wrote uh, when I was at Harvard, 
1978 under those um, uh, grants from the Department of Energy, which again, I have to, to, uh, to, to praise and say thank you because without those grants, very likely I will not be here today. Let us uh, see the primary characteristics of those equations, okay? Now the most important one is that um, it is characterized by two non-unitary transform in its finite um, version, of course. Um, here they denote W and Z that, um, that first of all, the, the, those transforms are individually non-unitary, but then their combination, W, Z dagger, such as, as is necessary in the time of evolution, this too is non-unitary. This is necessary for the, um, for, to guarantee that we exit the axiom of quantum mechanics as obvious mandatory to represent irreversibility since quantum mechanics is structurally irreversible from A to Z. The, uh, the another very important characteristic is algebraic structure, um, namely that it is jointly Lie admissible and Jordan admissible in the sense of Albert as reviewed in part one, namely the, the totally antisymmetric bracket is uh, careful not Lie, is Lie isotopic because there is a sandwiching of an, of an operator in between, uh, in between the elements A and B, and the totally symmetric bracket attached to, the, to this dynamical bracket is not Jordan, but it is Jordan isotopic. The, 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 finally, the conclusion of lecture one is that uh, those equations, this structure, uh, um, when elaborated with the mathematics of quantum mechanics is catastrophically inconsistent. I repeat, catastrophically inconsistent on both mathematically and physical ground. Mathematically, this um, time evolution implies the loss of uh, the, the basic unit, consequence a loss of the fields, and consequence a loss of um, the entire mathematical structure, spaces, topology, differential calculus, etc. On physical grounds, the, the inconsistencies are really substantial because implied inability to, um, to preserve the, the unit of measurement, impossibility to predict the same number under the same conditions at different times, loss of hermeticity and therefore of observability over time, etc. So the situation was very serious. This was identified at the end of 1978 because um, it is in my style, as I'm sure the style of um, most of my colleagues, if not all my colleagues, following the achievement of some results which is promising, we have to enter into very severe self-criticism to make sure that our studies will eventually have a chance of passing the test of time. So we went in the middle into a, into a chain of, um, of study that lasted for decades. It took two or three decades, finally, to, to achieve invariance, namely to solve those problems. Let me um, flash the results first, and then give you the history of how this, um, those, this main result was achieved. Here are the three conditions under which we believe that we have achieved, indeed, um, axiomatically correct, full invariance in the representation or irreversibility of nature. The, um, the first condition is perhaps the most important one. We tried impossible to represent um, irreversibility with a little, uh, little gadget, a little game, uh, adding something here and there. They all failed. I mean, not, none of them was ever even submitted for publication. It reached a point in which we, um, we had to understand that irreversibility is such a profound feature of nature that to represent it correctly had to be embedded in the most elemental and fundamental point of mathematics. And, uh, and that is the, um, at this level, is the multiplication. So we had to introduce a, a fundamental order in the product of a, a, any two, two entities. First, order all products to the right, in this case representing physically the, the motion forward in time, and then we had to order all products to the left, to represent motion backward in time. Secondly, we, um, we, uh, of course, we, make we made sure that um, variational self-adjoint potential forces, if you prefer, were represented with conventional unchanged Hamiltonian. And then we, um, we, 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 we discovered that uh, the, f the, 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 the non-potential, non-self-adjoint forces for motion forward in time were represented very well by the operator S that you have seen in the preceding transparency. <laughs> And um, the backward, um, uh, the, the interaction for the backward motion in time were represented by the operator R. Now, the assumption, this, is, this, this equality is crucial throughout the entire lecture. The disequality of the R and S operator, I can assure you, 
guaranteed, guarantee irreversibility. And finally, but this is not enough for the foreign variance. This, at this level, we are still at a physical, mostly physical level. <laughs> to achieve invariance, we were, we, um, there was a, a strong emergence of the need of a dual lifting, genotopic lifting, of the totality of the mathematics of quantum mechanics, from field, metric spaces, functional analysis, differential calculus, Lie algebra, topology, etc. Dual. Why dual? Yes, it was unavoidable, and you will see it better in a while. Because the, um, the, the, first of all, one of them had to apply for motion forward in time and the other for motion backward in time. But that's conceptual. From a technical viewpoint, the, there was the need of introducing two different units, basic generalized units, one for motion forward in time and the other for motion backward in time. And the, um, this generalized unit to be, to be the, the, the inverse of the R and S operators. And as we, um, in, the, in the, the entire dual genotopic, there are two different genomathematics. There's forward genomathematics and backward genomathematics. They have to admit at all level, again, from fields, metric spaces, Hilbert spaces, etc., they have to admit um, the, the, this, the, this forward, what's called forward genounit, at all level, and, uh, and for the backward motion, the, the, the backward genounit. And this is um, achieved here at this uh, level of the uh, enveloping algebra. It's achieved um, by simply lifting, uh, lifting the product AB, not only in an ordered form, that you can see here from assumption one, but also by sandwiching in between the, the two, um, the two uh, the operator or matrices or whatever, the sandwich is the inverse of the Gano unit. If you do that, it's very easy to do that throughout the entire <coughs> forward formulation, the forward Geno unit is indeed the correct uh, unit, but at the left and right level, but uh, that has to be implemented all, at all levels. Uh, this is essentially the main result. I have to um, uh, express uh, uh, a worry at this moment, uh, at this point of the lecture, that, um, that essentially up to, this, up to the initiation of this study, the, the stud, um, mathematical, physical stud, uh, research in the admissibility was essentially the same. Namely, we use the same symbol, the same formulation for that, uh, in physics as it was used in mathematics. Uh, it is essentially the language, uh, the language of non-associative algebra. However, um, this, uh, this language, this formu formalism, if you prefer, resulted to be fundamentally insufficient to achieve um, irreversibility. At that point, there was, um, a, 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 since at that point, we're talking about 1979, 1980, there has been a separation of research between mathematics and physics. That is unfortunately re regrettable because this has delayed the achievement of new clean energy. So um, this dichotomy, this disparity persists in its um, full dimension as of this moment. And I really hope that mathematicians, by continuing, of course, the magnificent research in the fields of non-associative algebra, which has nothing to, there's no criticism at the level of pure mathematics, at least they also consider new needs, um, mathemat purely mathematical needs, in physics for the correct treatment of irreversibility. And besides this type of axiomatization, maybe they will invent another one. They will be very welcome indeed. Okay, so um, at this point I want to um, re review for you briefly the, the laborious sequence of trial and error that um, with ups and downs, great enthusiasm, so followed by great depression and because we um, self-criticism identified severe insufficiency and so on. Because um, besides, you know, I have it on record that I do care to have this in record, but also because you can, um, at each stumbling blocks, perhaps some of you can see some alternative. I'll tell you what the, the only alternative that I saw at that time after considerable research, of course. The initiation of the efforts that eventually led to the, the, the invariant formulation of irreversibility is a, um, a paper of 1979, which I wrote a year after the 78 paper in which I presented the admissible generalization of Heisenberg equation. Essentially, I asked myself the question, the, the, um, sure, okay, this is a covering of Heisenberg. Okay, what is the covering of Schrodinger equation that carefully via a non-unitary transformation, this is a non-unitary theory, unitary will be in quantum mechanics, the here is non-unitary, the, the covering of Schrodinger becomes equivalent to the covering of Heisenberg. 
And those are the equations that came out. From that, this was presented in a purely mathematical viewpoint. What the, essentially, I looked at the structure of the finite time evolution of the fundamental equation of hadronic mechanics, and I recognized there was an action from the left and a non-equivalent action from the right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the mathematical structure of hadronic mechanics. It is a bimodule. Indeed, look at the title, Initiation of the Paper, Initiation of the Representation Theory of Lee Admissible Algebra of Operator on a bimodular, this is the very crucial word, bimodular, Hilbert space. But then, uh, soon I recognize this is not a Hilbert space. It cannot be a Hilbert space. It will, it will become transparent in a moment. Indeed, this is um, it's not an ordinary bimodule. It's called a, a Geno bimodule. Why? First of all, because the action to the right is not, um, cannot be connected by any transformation to the action to the left. So they are totally disjoint. So it, this is not a conventional bimodule. But then, in addition, each action is isotopic. There is a sandwiching of, of the R and S operators in between. So it's a non-trivial genotopy of the um, conventional notion of bimodular Hilbert space. There has been no paper whatsoever in pure mathematics in, uh, that I know on this, uh, on this um, uh, type of uh, what I call genotopic uh, bi uh, bimodule. The, at the mathematical level, I really wish that the mathematician will study that because the representation theory is fundamental to design machines. Okay, and then the issue was how do we repeat the next issue, fine. After um, understanding this by um, gain or by modular structure, the next issue is how do we represent the fundamental forces of, of the hadronic uh, mechanics? Those are the, the, the Lagrange and Hamilton external terms that represent irreversibility. They are directly dependent on time uh, and so on from uh, part one of this lecture. Then, it, um, uh, again, we immediately recognize that the potential interaction were represented by the Hamiltonian, but then we recognized very easily that I think it was 1980 or 81, I don't remember exactly, but we recognize very easily that this, um, this um, uh, Geno um, um, uh, eigenvalue equation indeed will represent, um, will represent um, the all, uh, all non 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 forces. Because the Hamiltonian was nice and decent with linear local potential, all these nice features of quantum mechanics, which are per perfect for a reversible exterior system of point particles in empty space. Remember the particles in an accelerator. Quantum mechanics, absolutely exact. But when the proton ends the acceleration and smashes against the, a nucleus, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I, I cannot accept quantum mechanics as being still exact. Because, um, we, first of all, because we have the, the most general non 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 interaction, non linear, non local, non -linear, structurally beyond any hope of representation via quantum mechanics, but that's only part of the limitation. The process becomes structurally irreversible. Very well, so this was indeed, look at here, so the Hamiltonian is, um, is fully uh, nice, but then the, the other operator in between is totally non-linear, totally unrestricted for functional dependence. So yes, this, we felt very confident we can represent the um, irreversibility, uh, irreversible forces, the external terms with the R and S operator. But look at the question mark here, the, um, good. But then how do we get invariance? Sure, we have a representation, but we need invariance. So the next issue was the, the, uh, was the concentrating uh, how do we represent the, the force in an invariant way. We had achieved them dynamically in the preceding slide. But here is now how do we uh, re represent them in an invariant way. Um, but the issue is the following. You have the most general possible uh, transformation of the log local coordinates. Uh, remember always Lagrange and Hamilton, I will never forget because their view of nature is majestic. Okay, so here those are their forces, not Ruggiero's forces. They're their forces, which depends on the time, etc. And those um, forces have to be invariant under those, this transfer, the most general possible transformation. We spend year, years and, uh, in trying and uh, all sorts of uh, trial and failure, trial, well, endless trial and failure, trial and, trial and failure. Finally, we find the solution. And the solution was one and only one, and that is still, as of today, has remained the only possible solution to achieve invariance, namely the representation of the Lagrange and Hamilton external terms with, the, the, with generalized units. Of course, two. One for motion forward in time and a different non-equivalent unit for motion backward in time. 
the non-equivalence will assure us what the main objective, representation of irreversibility, because that's the top, top, top objective. Everything else is, is subordinate. Otherwise, you end up with <laughs> completely different results. So number one, uh, um, um, and this was guaranteed by the differentiation of the two units. And then, <clears throat> then the, the achievement of the invariant was consequential. Why? Because, as, uh, as stated in, uh, in, um, in the uh, lecture 2b on the isotopy, the unit is the fundamental invariant of anything, whether it's simple, uh, generalized, isotopic, genotopic, forward, back, I don't know, dual unit. There are many, many units now in, 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 the, in the 21st century science. We are at the beginning of the third millennium. And so we, are, hey, we have new vistas for new sciences heading for, toward the star. Remember um, the lecture 3A, if you have seen it, say, mark my words, mankind will indeed one day reach the stars. Okay, so the, back to here, the, 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 the unit is the fundamental. So I was absolutely thrilled when we see this. Was, um, and this uh, the Geno unit has, are the inverse of the R and S operator. So you will see the implication mathematically and physically very soon. So it's very deep and very elegant, simple, and, um, and you will see concrete example in, the, in lecture 3D. So this was a moment of uh, elation. But as it seems, this will be a roller coaster. This history is a roller coaster. I, mean, I told you up front. There have been so many ups and downs. After achieving the, the moment of elation of, um, of uh, making this advance, there was immediately a moment of reflection. And was the worst of them all in my life. Why? Because. I have to build machines. I have to design machines producing clean fuels, the irreversible process. I have to achieve new fusion, irreversible, dramatically irreversible processes. And so I, I, I need numbers. So this, now I had generalized the unit. So therefore I had lost the numbers. So because the numbers are based on, on, the, on the unit one. And so there was a moment of collapse because the entire research done up to this point, we're talking about um, the mid 80s, uh, was gone. It was an, uh, had no practical value that I can, I could admit with my the strongest possible self-criticism. So part of the problem um, was that my, uh, as I indicated also in the in the lecture on isotopy, was my uh, un unbounded devotion for the mat great mathematician that had achieved the classification of all numbers namely the classification of all sets that verify the axiom of a field over, uh, for the case of characteristic zero, which is the case of interest for physics, which is tacitly assumed from here now. As everybody knows, the numbers are classified in the real, complex, and, and quaternion. Octonions are not numbers. And the, the, the number, uh, the, 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 this, this, the, the weight of the mathematician, Gauss, my God, and uh, Hamilton is my mentor. I, I was afraid just to think of the classification of, of numbers. So I said, that's the end of it. That's the end of hadronic mechanics. Until one day, out of desperation, I was in Dubna, at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna. At, out of sheer desperation, I decided to reinspect the classification of numbers as set in history. And, um, and the moment I had that courage in everything, uh, the solution came almost instantaneous. And, and, uh, and uh, indeed, it was a magic moment, the most thrilling moment in my, perhaps in my entire life. I, I achieved jointly the solution for the um, isonumbers, as well as now in this case, for the Geno numbers forward and backward in time. Remember, in, um, in lecture 2b for the isonumber, I pointed out that the axioms of a field do not restrict the, the basic unit of a field to be the pre-biblical number one. No can be an arbitrary entity, even outside the field itself. <laughs> in the sense, it can be a matrix, an differential operator, provided that it is positive definite. Then topologically, uh, this entity, positive definite, is the same as one, which is the, um, also positive definite. The moment you go at an abstract level, you lose any distinction. That's why isofields are fields. It can be expressed, now, expressed nowadays with the same symbol of a field. But careful, the symbols are dramatically different from what you didn't read in the books of the 20th century. OK, so this you have to keep in mind, because the, um, remember that, the, as also stated in, in lecture one, a knowledge of um, isomathematics is really crucial and recommendable for the understanding of the broader genomathematics. And, uh, the, and I cannot repeat everything you know, on one single lecture. So, 
So that was, but you have to keep it in mind for in this point is important. So the first discovery which I made is that uh, in addition to lack of restriction on the unit value one, also the axiom of a field do not necessarily require that the, that the multiplication be bilateral, namely that you have both two multiplied by um, uh, three to the right or three multiplied by two to the left. This is implied in the, in the historical classification of number. I checked the situation, I said no. All prod, given a field, all products can be ordered to the right, and provided, here is the point, provided that they're all ordered to the right, then this new set, restricted set, is a field, verifies the axiom of a field. And exactly the same happens if you have the same field, you, um, you restrict all the ordering to the left, the subset with such restriction is, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the set, uh, the original set, subject to that restriction in the multiplication, namely all, order, all multiplications ordered to the left, that set verifies the axiom of a field. This is, ladies and gentlemen, this is fundamental in my, my, uh, my view, and if I, am, if I am correct, please do let me uh, bring it to my attention. But this is fundamental because, again, you see, we, we, this allows the axiomatization of irreversibility from the most fundamental possible <laughs> Uh, a, a level of mathematics, which is precisely the ordering in the multiplication of a field. You cannot go any deeper than that. The, the, um, and indeed, this was a, a magic moment in my life because, okay, this is forward or, 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 uh, multiplication to the right, um, uh, axiomatized motion forward in time and the other motion backward. But then, I, uh, then at this moment, remember, the, here is the importance of the isotopy. In addition to the, at this time, the multiplication was still as, uh, associative, only multiplication to the right or to the left. But the multiplication was the, the old one, uh, again, from thousands of years of age. Um, but in the meantime, I had discovered, at the same time, I had discovered the, the ISO numbers. So the capability of using an arbitrary number. So it was elementary then um, to, um, to introduce, introduce, um, introduce uh, uh, the gain of fields, namely, Essentially, they are given by, the, by the, 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 the original set here in the noted with the letter A, which is multiplied by the, multiplied by the, the again, an arbitrary entity that you assume as generalized unit to the, to the right. You order all the products to the right, and you construct a multiplication accordingly in the same, in such a way that um, the Geno unit to the right is indeed a left and right unit. And then you discover that uh, that set is in, verifies indeed uh, all axioms of a field. And therefore, it is a field. So to summarize the point is the, um, there is the double st uh, steps. Now, first, there is the, you need, uh, the, there is, uh, the need of uh, the understanding of, uh, of an ordering of the product that has to go as elementary as possible, and then the, the, then the unit has to be generalized accordingly. So, so in this case, we, so at least at that moment, at this moment, at least I was, I was confident that we, we, were, we had a good hope of regaining numbers. Careful, because this we have regained the notion of a field, but we need numbers to, to, to do machines. And this, um, again, all units are integral differential operators, as you will see, are very fancy mathematical structure. As you will see, they're not numbers, actual numbers, one, two, three, four, five, as we will see in lecture um, 3D. So the, the, this was a good step forward, but the solution was still far away. Regretfully, I don't have time to present a, a mathematical definition of Geno fields. It is available in, in the reference I have indicated, or, or the viewer of this DVD can stop it and, and read, and read you know, this, uh, basically, this transparency, then read the second the transparency for a, a more rigorous um, def, uh, definition in applied mathematics. OK, well, let's see the classification of Geno numbers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have 12 different Geno numbers. First, we have the forward, Geno real, Geno complex, and Geno quaternions. And then we have, of course, the backward, Geno real, Geno complex, and Geno quaternion. That's six. But then um, each of them can be classified uh, into type one and type two, depending on whether the Geno units are element of the original fields or not. So in a total, you will have uh, 12. Different. Physically, mathematically, they're all equivalent, but physically, they are, um, they are different because they represent dramatically different uh, systems, as we will see. 
There is a lemma that is very um, easy to prove, namely that uh, the, um, the, the Geno fields are fields in the sense that they verify all axioms of a field. Let's see from the, 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 the non-triviality of the um, non-triviality of the, the notion of Geno fields. Remember, in the ISO field, I gave you an example. I said, suppose one day I wake up, I don't want to use the number one as unit anymore, which I did. I said, I want to use the number three. Fine. I did the calculation, and the, the, the fields, were, the axiom were preserved. But in this case, under the assumption that the, the, the unit is three, then two multiplied by three is two, no longer six. And the number four is prime. Remember this, and now, now this, this type of unusual feature are doubled because we have one for the right and one for the left. Indeed, okay, let's assume the, the, as unit the number three. You have to specify forward or backward. In this case, for, uh, forward. And then I want to assume um, backward unit two. Very well. And then in this case, two multiplied by three to the right is uh, two. And two multiplied by three to the left is three. So, so you have different numerical, first of all, when you multiply, do multiply by three, you don't get six. But that's not enough. That's insufficient. That's isotopy. It's insufficient for, to, um, to achieve an invariant formulation of irreversibility. You have to differentiate the, the multiplication of the same number. If you multiply to the right, you have one result. And the multiplication of the same, num same number, same number. When the multiplication is to the left, you have to have a different result. Otherwise, you end up with equal probability of, a, of an event forward in time as compared to an event backward in time. In concrete terms, when I worked at the intermediate control and nuclear fusion, if I, don't implement, I don't, if I don't implement this structural differentiation in the multiplication forward and backward, when I, I achieve, um, the, the, do the calculation to, um, to, to, to design a machine that produces the synthesis of the, uh, the, of the nitrogen from the deuterium and the carbon, then I get exactly the same probability for the, um, uh, for the spontaneous the, um, disintegration, spontaneous disintegration of the nitrogen back into the deuterium and the carbon. Because in this case, the, uh, scatter, the amplitude of the process is, not, does, is totally insensitive to the time direction, and therefore it predicts both directions. And I cannot uh, possibly, in full honesty, use uh, uh, private funds, funds from corporations, under those conditions. Okay, let's, um, let's, go, let's go forward now. Now we want to indicate some of the open problems. The, the, the only have been sketched. You know. Here is a, is a case which I believe is very intriguing, namely the genotopies of metric space. Think about, um, the, of course, the Minkowski space, which is at the foundation of special relativity and 20th century sciences. Okay, this, um, the, it's very easy to construct geno, ge, forward geno spaces. What, what do you, do? You, you have the metric, you multiply the metric by the inverse of the geno unit. So you have the most general possible metric that you can think of, and uh, not assumed to be non-singular in this case. And then um, the result of the line element, you have to multiply by the Geno unit because the line element has to be a Geno scalar. In this case, it has to be an element of the, of the forward Geno field. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is, um, seems to be mathematically trivial, but from a physical viewpoint, it's, it's not. The, um, the, 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 the genotopic element T that is multiplied, uh, that multiplies the, the, the original metric is non-symmetric because those, um, those objects, uh, the ISO unit, are non-hermitian. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we are talking about here? We are talking about the most general possible as far as the functional dependence is concerned, but that's the secondary point. Not only the most general possible lifting a, a, a genotopy in our language of the metric, but into a form that is no longer symmetric. It is necessary, ladies and gentlemen, in my view, to, to, to achieve a geometric formulation of irreversibility. Unless you embed the irreversibility, the direction of time, you embed it in the metric itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I have my reservation that you have indeed uh, achieved um, a correct treatment of irreversibility.
Uh, again, this type of structure has a new symmetry. Remember in the isotopy, uh, particularly lecture 3a, three, three that um, you can multiply the Geno, the Geno um, matrix by, by a number, and then you multiply the Geno unit by the inverse, and of course the line element stays as the same. This is, a, a, this is a property now at the genotopic level of what we have discussed in preceding lecture, namely that contrary to a belief throughout the entire 20th century, the Poincaré symmetry is 11 dimensional. And this 11 dimensionality calls, um, uh, well, it calls isotopic invariant in the other lecture, here will be genotopic invariant, is fundamental to achieve, um, uh, in my opinion, to achieve a grand unification of electroweak and, um, and gravitational interaction. I have um, a, a, a conjecture that uh, I have not proved, and I really will appreciate if some mathematician can prove it, namely that, that, that the genotopies of a given metric space are isomorphic to the original space. I repeat, if you have, if you have an original space, Minkowski, and you do this class, this class of the most general possible genotopy. What is the genotopy? It's a multiplication of the metric, of Minkowski metric, by a non-symmetric, non-singular, but non-symmetric, real value of a non-symmetric matrix. So you have the most general possible formulation, non-symmetric, with the direction of time, because the transposer will be the backward. So you do this for the metric. And, um, and you construct this line element, careful, has to be careful, fundamental line element has to be an element of the, of the Geno field, forward Geno field. If you do this, then the resulting, the conjecture um, uh, indicates that if you do this, then the resulting Geno space is locally isomorphic to the original Minkowski space. Uh, and, uh, first, uh, analysis seems to be totally nonsense. But this is, uh, the, that's why this field is insidious to people, <laughs> colleagues who are not familiar, are not, um, are not technically prepared. The reason why, because sure, it makes no sense if you examine this Geno Minkowski space by using the mathematics of the Minkowski space. If you do a minestrone, it makes no sense. No, if you have generalized the space structurally in such a dramatic way, you cannot use the mathematics of Minkowski. Don't do it. You'll just, uh, uh, you'll just damage yourself and disqualify yourself. No, you have to look at it. You have to treat it with a mathematics, with again a mathematics. But then the um, situation is dramatically different because, sure, we have deformed the Minkowski metric by this non-symmetric matrix. But here is the key point. We, this deformation is now referred to a generalized unit that not only is non also non-symmetric, but is the inverse of the deformation. So therefore, they cancel out exactly as it is the case for the isosphere, the isocone, et cetera, of, um, of lecture, uh, the preceding uh, lectures. I will appreciate, however, uh, despite this plausibility, I present it as a conjecture because it should be treated ma mathematically. OK, let's move fa fast now. This is the Geno, func uh, Geno functional analysis. A Geno function is an has to be an element of a Geno field. The variable has to be a, a, a Geno. A, a, a Geno scalar, I did very, very few, just the minimum necessary to do the primitive calculations. I checked that, you know, the algebra, the, the units, uh, the Geno units are correct, the power, the square root, and I did the exponentiation, the Geno exponentiation to the right or to the left, because this is fundamental. You have seen this from transparency one. But after this, I've done, I could not do more. I really wish that the mathematician will work it out. Next, what I did, I worked on uh, the genotopy of the Hilbert space. Those are, are fundamental for doing calculations. Yes, here I did spend some time. And the genotopies, again, are very simple, the same as the genotopy of the, Mink of the Minkowski or other metric space. You sandwich in between any product, any associative product, you sandwich the inverse of the Geno unit. Here we look at forward, so everything from now on will be forward. I don't have time to do jointly, but it is mm, the, the both joint uh, left um, forward and backward. It's available in the literature um, which I quoted. OK, so you sandwich the, 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 the forward gen, um, genotopic element in between any product. And then at the end of the, at the, end of, um, the, the Geno expectation value, there has to be an element of the Geno field. Then you have to multiply by the Geno unit. OK, after, um, uh, then it's very easy to compute, for instance, the, the usual rules to see that indeed the Geno unit is the correct Geno unit of the, of the, the modular action. So here you can reinspect. The transparency number two, the first identification of, of Geno by modular structure, you can understand it in more details. Because now you see that type of structure implies the actual lifting of the fundamental unit of the entire theory. So the transition from conventional by module to the Geno by module is by far not trivial. 
And it's shown here by this, um, because whatever formulation you in the unit, I have a modular action, what is the unit? Well, the unit is a, <laughs> a pretty general non-admission non integral differential operator with an arbitrary function of dependence on wave function or whatever you need. Finally, this is the most important equation, is the, um, is the genotopy of the eigenvalue equation. Again, as for the isotopy, this is very trivial here. Look how small it is, so simple, the abstract way. But this is the genotopic order to the product to the right genotopic. So um, write it down explicitly. The, uh, Hamiltonian is the simple Hamiltonian of quantum mechanics. But then the genotopic element has the uh, most general possible functional dependence. So therefore, yes, yes, I can embed irreversibility here. But I have to do numbers. I have to do. I need numbers to the compute machine, and that is the. When I saw this to the right, it was a thrilling, another thrilling moment in my life. Why? Because on the right, of course, for mathematical consistency, the eigen eigenvalue of a genotopic action has to be a, a geno number. But the geno number is multiplied by the genotopic element, so the geno unit and the, and its inverse they cancel out, and at the end you have ordinary numbers. Namely, this axiomatization of irreversibility, when you do all the calculation, at the end does indeed produce numbers, exactly uh, ordinary number, uh, numbers, exactly as needed in practical applications. And uh, the, uh, uh, this was a, another fundamental point I have to bring to your attention, because whatever you want to do in a, to, um, to, to reach an axiomatic formulation of irreversibility at the end, you, if you want to have physical value, you have to produce ordinary number because we have to do, uh, confront this theory with experiments and see the implication. <laughs> okay, now the, as far as physical event is concerned, this is a, a, a ideal physical case is what I indicated before. The proton that after completing its acceleration, exited the accelerator and hits a nucleus. And then you start all this irreversible process. They can all be embedded in here. Then if you look at the reversibility of that event in a deep, very, very high energy, deep in elastic scattering, then you'll see them, not only the need of this um, uh, enormous uh, arbitrariness in, in the interaction, but also you will see the need of, of having numbers on the right hand side. Otherwise, the broader, this will be the admissible scattering theory. You cannot confront it with experiment. But the foundations are here, ladies and gentlemen. OK, the Ganoil space has the same new degree of freedom as the, as the, the um, Minkowski, the um, uh, Minkowski space, namely you multiply the interior of the, of the Geno expectation value by a constant. You multiply the Geno out, uh, outside by the inverse and you get um, a symmetry. And this symmetry is fundamental. As a matter of fact, you can construct, you, you can construct the Geno Hilbert space by starting from the Hilbert space and using this degree of freedom. So in, in the, the, uh, this, I mentioned this because I dedicated a paper for another um, um, way, my way of honoring um, Albert Einstein, because this is a realization of the, the EPA argument. Namely, this is a kind of a completion of quantum mechanics. And when you go at the level of Bell's inequality, Bell's inequality do not, no longer apply under this you know, mathematics. So therefore, the, the, um, the, 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 the admissible formulation do have indeed, contrary to all expectation, throughout um, the 20th century, do have indeed a classical image. That's exactly Albert Einstein viewpoint that finally I achieved and proved this view uh, 100%. As you may remember, Albert Einstein was disqualified, quote unquote, by a number of, um, of, uh, of uh, uh, academicians and physicists during, the, during his life because of his reservation regarding quantum mechanics that was complete. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Albert Einstein was Albert Einstein. So I took very seriously his doubts, <laughs> and I spent decades of my life in, in the trying and counter-trying and, and to, to see whether indeed they, they did make mathematical and physical sense, and they do, ladies and gentlemen, they do. What is missing was, what was missing, it was an, impossible uh, during Einstein time, is to have this new mathematics and the capability to, to broaden the axiom to include the irreversibility, <laughs> then the completion. Of, of quantum, of not of quantum mechanics, no longer quantum, but the completion of the operator mechanic precisely as conceived by Einstein is inevitable, inevitable. As I don't know, know whether we'll have the time to say it during this lecture, there is just too much. But, um, but uh, the, the papers are available in free PDF download. Okay, next I have to at least uh, briefly indicate uh, another field which is incomplete uh, as far as from mathematical viewpoint, grossly incomplete, I should say, 
which I did alone, essentially the, the, uh, the, the Lee admissible generalization of Lee theory in all its various branches, namely em enveloping associative algebra, Lee algebra, and Lee groups. To my knowledge, very unfortunately, this field has not been studied by mathematicians. Uh, to my best knowledge, if um, you know of any paper, please uh, do let, uh, bring it to my attention. Okay, so but um, the, 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 the genotopy, as I call it, is very, uh, very, very easy, so it's just uh, straightforward. The implications, however, are not that trivial. Well, from a um, viewpoint of the enveloping algebra, you have seen this from the first transparency. The admissible dynamical equation in finite form, they have an action to the left, an action to the right, exponential to the left, exponential to the right. The, um, the poincare birkhoff witt theorem with its infinite dimensional basis characterizes the exponentiation. So, so we, of course, we need two. And again, we go toward two different um, lifting of uh, genotopy of the mathematics of the 20th century. So the enveloping, the geno uh, we'll have forward and backward the genotopic algebra, this with order product to the right or order product to the left. But this is uh, consistent, they provide an infinite dimensional basis that indeed uh, provide an axiomatization of um, uh, uh, genotopic exponentiation to the right and to the left. Then I did the genotopy of the Lee second theorem, which is rather trivial. And then uh, finally, I did the genotopy of the Lee transformation group reaching what are called uh, Santilli Lee admissible uh, transformation group at this moment. The, the, uh, that's all I did, essentially. Uh, it was enough, because then I, I knew how to construct uh, the representation on a Geno bimodular space uh, to compute what is, what is uh, the, the behavior of a proton <coughs> in the core of a star in, on the irreversible condition, except in addition to non-non-non uh, interaction. Uh, that, that, that characterized by the genotopy of the Poincaré group. This is already enough for me to do the calculation that I needed. Incidentally, the proton is, uh, we are talking about uh, the, the, the nucleus of the hydrogen atom under a submerged electric arc for the production of new energy. Everything I said is referred to machines to produce new fuels and new, uh, new clean energy. Everything is targeted, has been targeted toward that from day one. Okay, let me close this transparency by bringing to your attention a rather intriguing uh, conjecture. Essentially stating that this uh, the, um, uh, Lee admissible formalism here is um, isomorphic to the conventional Lee formalism. Le namely, more precisely, that the Lee admissible bracket are essentially isomorphic to the conventional Lee bracket. This seems total nonsense, ladies and gentlemen, particularly to colleagues who are, who are not being initiated in this field of study. Of course, the, the Lie admissible bracket uh, the, uh, are totally non-isomorphic to the Lie bracket, but when? When both brackets are investigated by, by the use of the, the Lie mathematics. However, the, the Lie admissible bracket must be investigated with the genotopic mathematics. Otherwise, it will be the same as investigating the Lie bracket with the geno mathematics. So it, it will be total nonsense. Now, when you, in the, um, you examine the Lie admissible bracket with geno mathematics, the perspective is completely different. Why? Because you, um, again, you deform the associative product by, a certain, by sandwiching a certain entity. We call it T-forward, whatever it is. But then you jointly deform the related unit in the field by the inverse amount. So therefore, the two, the two the formations, they cancel each other. Exactly, it, it, it happens for, the, for, uh, for uh, isosphere, isocone, um, geno mathematics, geno Minkowski spaces, etc. In any case, this is a, uh, presented as a conjecture because it needs a careful study and uh, mathematically rigorous formulation by mathematicians. Well, here is another, um, uh, another st stumbling block. After decades of work, the, remember we're talking about, we started in 1967, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The, 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 the so many years and decades, trial and error, trial and error, ladies and gentlemen, at, um, in, in, the, in the early 90s, uh, it, um, um, Lee admissible formulation still had not achieved invariance. In other words, Ad, uh, the, uh, the admissible formulation of Adroni mechanics was still not, in my opinion, mature for concrete applications. And, uh, and uh, the, it, it was a devastating moment that lasted, the law, lasted for years, because this, in, in my opinion, implied that the entirety of the effort was over so many years by so many people, 
and no physical values. It was a devastating moment because, the, uh, because I did not know where to look. When, um, when we lost the numbers, I knew what, what to look. I did not have the courage in respect to Gauss, Hamilton, and the giant in mathematics. I, but that's a separate issue. But I knew I had to look at the axiom of a field. Here, I did not know where to look for, where, why the, the, the formulation was inconsistent. And I had not achieved. I had lifted everything that um, I could possibly lift. Finally, in 1995, and uh, this was the same as for the isotopy, during a meeting, in a large meeting uh, that we had um, at the ca Castle Prince Pignatelli in Italy uh, the, the, in 1995, finally I, I said to myself, I had to have the courage of inspecting Newton's differential calculus. That, that re remain unchanged and, in my opinion, to my knowledge, not inspected for centuries since Newton time. It was the only thing left. And uh, throughout the century, as, as well as the, uh, the way the differential calculus had been taught to me and I had heard it in, in uh, high, um, high um, education uh, and institution throughout the world, differential calculus uh, was insensitive to the unit. It was independent from uh, the unit of the base field. Ladies and gentlemen, this turned out to be not correct. The differential calculus turned out to be structurally dependent on the assumed unit. If the unit is independent from the local value, well, yes, the, yeah, the statement is correct. But if the unit uh, the, the directly depends on the local uh, variable differentiation, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely not. In fact, the, 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 consider the differential of a variable. Well, in the, this formalism, the, the, the variable has to be a gain of variable, namely it has to be an ordinary variable, R for instance, but multiplied by the gain of unit. And the gain of unit <laughs> depend certainly on the, on the var variable uh, R. So therefore, when you do the differentiation, you have something dramatically different than the differential calculus uh, the, uh, that has been in effect from Newton to the 20th century. And, uh, and then uh, for axiomatic reason as well as consistency, the, the Geno differential has to be multiplied by the inverse of the Geno unit. Um, so you see that when uh, either the Geno unit is constant or independent from the local variable, the Geno differential to the right coincides with the ordinary differential. It's a kind of hidden variable. It's a kind of completion along the inspiration by Albert Einstein as well as, uh, as, well as his associate. Rosen and Podolsky that I had to be, I had to na name them because they are big names in the history of science that I, I, am, I have great respect for them. They have been a, a reason for great inspiration throughout those, all those years, so I have no words to say thank you, thank you. Maybe they, they are listening to us today. Now, okay, so the same for the, the partial derivative. When I did this, the, then the, the, the achievement of invariance was, um, was instantaneous. We will see it in a moment in more details. <clears throat> but then I reformulated the, the forward Newton's equation in this way in which, the, as for the isotopy, the, the non-self-adjoint uh, um, Newtonian force is, disappears because it's embedded in the iso unit. We will see this in all details in lecture 3b. This is, ladies and gentlemen, is by far non-trivial. Why? Because this uh, equation here is variationally self-adjoint. Of course, in the genotopic sense, so what? But this implies that uh, the irreversibility, the most general possible non 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 irreversible process, can be represented with a first-order variational principle, as we will see. Therefore, I have, I, I have a very um, clear, unique, and unambiguous map to an operator form. And that, um, uh, that is the very, very essence of hadronic mechanics. Well, let, let me close this, uh, this lecture by, the, by looking at, uh, at invariance. First of all, we, we have, I have to flash for theoretical physicists a very easy way of, uh, of constructing uh, the, 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 the admissible formulation of, um, of uh, hadronic mechanics. This, uh, the, the simple uh, rules essentially allow you to pick up any model, quantum mechanical model, and you can subject it to those rules, and you automatically embed irreversibility and restrict all motion uh, forward in time. The, you, have to, you have to select, the select is um, number one, you have to select uh, the, a Geno unit from the, the, the system that you want to represent. We will see in the lecture 3D. And then you, um, you decompose this again. You remember this non-hermitian. You decompose it into two non-unitary transformations. And then, first of all, what you have to do is rule number two. Every physical quantity has to be subjected to this uh, dual transformation. 
dual non-unitary because to have sense, you know, the, the, you are in a new world now. You, if you think quantum mechanically, you are completely out of track. No, now it's in quantum mechanics, the Hamiltonian, the energy have no direction of time, of course, because the quantum mechanics was conceived for reversible system by the giant who conceived it. But here we're talking about the irreversible process. So the physical quantity must have a direction in time. Physical quantities must have a direction in time. So the Hamiltonian, you have to map it, and you have um, the, what is the Geno Hamiltonian, direction of time, the same for linear momentum, etc. After that, you, um, you submit the totality of the, the formalism of quantum mechanics to this dual transformation, dual non unitary and you construct everything I've said so far. Geno numbers, Geno units, Geno numbers, Geno fields, Geno expectation values, the, 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 the Geno Hilbert spaces, and Geno exponentiation in a very easy say, way. At this moment, I have to warn um, uh, colleagues, usually a very small minority, who when see something like this, they're extremely eager to jump at the conclusion, oh, but this is trivial. <laughs> because, of course, the, the intent, um, not explicitly stated, but in general, the intent is to suppress advances, essentially, in this case. Well, I want to warn them because the, the, this is the only part of, uh, this is the easiest part of uh, the construction of the Lee admissible formulation. And uh, I suggest those colleagues who have that doubt of triviality to lo look also at, uh, at the Lee, uh, Santilli Lee isotopic theory, in which the most important branch of Santilli Lee isotopic theory cannot be reached via a non-unitary transformation because the, the, what are the structure constant in Lie theory becomes structure function. And that is beyond any capability of a trivial map. And indeed, um, in general, this, uh, the, 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 uh, the structure function, we have structure function in the Lie isotopy theory, also in the Lie admissible theory. Positively, you cannot reach that structure with uh, this dual transformation. Next, let me show there's a very important point that if you subject the, um, the, the, the Lie admissible formalism, to another single or dual non-unitary transform, you absolutely you do not have the invariance that we need in physics. In other words, we have to clarify here, careful, that you start from a, a, from a genotopic ordered product to the right, you end up with also with a genotopic ordered product to the right. So by applying this dual transformation, you do not alter uh, or change the, 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 the algebraic structure of a product. You cannot do that. And that's not what I had in mind for non-invariance. No, what happens is you do the calculations and you end up with the image of the genotopic element becomes a monster. And the genotopic unit, I don't write it down explicitly, but also becomes a, a very complicated quantity. Then generally, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is absolutely unacceptable on physical ground, precisely as it was the case at the level of the isotopy. Why? Because remember that the geno unit represents a physical system. Think about spaceship during re-entry in which we started this, uh, this uh, le lecture 2C was the first transparency that I projected. So, but this is the original uh, um, uh, Geno forward to the right. What you get uh, here with this monster, this can be a proton in the core of a star. This can be something totally different. You have jumped from one system to uh, something totally different. So therefore, this is not invariant. No, we have, to, um, we have to have the invariance of the original represented system. You should not have expected at this level, because this level is still what I call a minestrone. I'm Italian-born, an American citizen, very proud to be an American, but Italian-born. So I have to use the word minestrone, because it is a minestrone. Namely, again, what you have, you have a, 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 a new mathematics, a new environment, and you use a, a, a transformation which is defining the old mathematics. It will be the same as uh, 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 elaborating <coughs> the, the Schrodinger equation of the hydrogen atom with Geno mathematics. This will be total nonsense. But ladies and gentlemen, we are doing the same here because we have a genotopic structure elaborated with the mathematics of quantum mechanics. And that's, that's absolutely unacceptable. But I had to bring it to your attention because it's very insidious. I've seen the best, best colleagues to, to be extremely sorry and retreat and confess that they were totally out of track with their rushing to their uh, objection uh, without first acquiring an in-depth knowledge, but above all, changing the, the, the way the mind thinks. When you are at the level of um, Lie admissible formulation, you have to think Geno mathematics. Anytime you use the mathematics of quantum mechanics, you end up with the total non-scientific nonsense, at least in my view. Uh, <coughs> okay, finally, this is the final transparency. <clears throat> However, you see, if a non, uh, dual non-unitary transform 
is reformulated in the language of Geno mathematics, then you get invariance, in the, which means the, the, the Geno unit is invariant, the, the system is preserved, which is the central objective. And what, what is this reformulation? It's identical. It's an identical. So you have here non unitary transform quantum mechanical. You're still at the level of quantum mechanics. You have to reformulate it as a, as a geno unitary transform by factoring out, as for the isotopy, you factor out a forward genotopic element. And then you, you easily see that those transformations, which are non unitary, in, uh, in a Hilbert space become unitary indeed in the Geno, Geno Hilbert space. We reconstruct unitarity. <coughs> if I, I had failed to achieve the, the reconstruction of unitarity in the Geno Hilbert space, I could not claim uh, verification of causality. So, because we all know that causality fundamentally depended on the axiom of unitarity. So, um, so once you do this, it's very easy to see that uh, the, the Geno unit subject to this dual geno-unitary, not non-unitary, geno-unitary transformation, but the proper product, use the proper mathematics, is, remains identical, remains unchanged. It's like the invariance of Planck's unit under a unitary transformation in quantum mechanics. This is the very, very essence of Adronian mechanics. We preserve this beautiful, what I call majestic axiomatic structure of quantum mechanics, but we preserve it at a much higher level. And the same for the isotopic uh, level. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, this is a summary of Geno mathematics. Uh, that in, again, I have to uh, uh, ask fellow mathematicians, please, please do complete this structure. Because the, or if uh, for any reason you do not accept this type of axiomatization of irreversibility, which is absolutely acceptable, actually, as a matter of fact, it's strongly recommended and encouraged because we have, to, we have to be absolutely sure what is the way to treat uh, irreversibility. But uh, whatever line you, you prefer uh, to select, uh, please do. We, we are now in their need of pure mathematical work but not by treating Lie admissible equations via the language of non-associative algebra, which absolutely, I'm sorry to say, is magnificent mathematically, but is fundamentally insufficient for concrete applications in physics. No, whether you use Geno mathematics or some other mathematics, you have to achieve this type of in, uh, invariance over time of the, the, the structure. In other words, you cannot stay at the Polaroid picture of your algebra. You have to, the, the algebra has to persist in beginning with the numerical value of the unit has to persist under the action to subsequent time, namely under the action of, of, of his own, in this case, Lie admissible group. In hope that indeed mathematician will indeed initiate this much needed study, much needed for new clean energy fuels, I thank you for your attention.